What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. What's entirely too happy wears comedy and tragedy masks and is so high, if you took a blood sample, the results would just say, yeah. Sure, it's pretty much every band member of Motley Crue, but it's also the Motley Crue that lives inside the made-up world of We Happy Few. This is a game by Compulsion Games and published by Gearbox. But a little bit like the hop to their gills inhabitants that live in the game world, We Happy Few has had its fair share of withdrawal symptoms, especially when folks got their hands on their early game and found out it was basically the worst parts of Ark Early Access mixed with something that most of the inhabitants of Bioshock could go and try to freebase glue to escape from. We Happy Few is out August 10th for $50 on Steam, Xbox, and PS4. Let's see how I did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for We Happy Few. Recapturing your mojo, fighting with the flames to flambe your enemies, and what it's like to wake up from a nightmare, only to find out that that nightmare was pretty cool compared to reality. Graphics are up first. This is without a shadow of a doubt all over the board. At times, it's straight up last call at a bar kind of graphics. From far away, it's not that bad looking, but man, sometimes when you get up close, you're like, damn, this looks unfortunate. The issue here is that the game can actually look tremendous, especially when you're sneaking through the sun-smattered forests on your way to some last moment of hope and humanity, and there's that fable-like fantasy flair of the graphics, and that sort of wows you with some really incredible lighting. Or the first time you light up a fire pipe and you take it out on the enemies, and the fire effects as they toast on the ground in front of you look pretty good. There's a number of excellent moments in the game. Additionally, I have to say I love the Austin Powers Bad Weekend kind of setup that the cities have with their lighting. Everything's turned up to 11, just enough that when you pop the drug in the game to do the social sneaking by of civilians, everything blooms out and you realize this is pretty much exactly how Timothy O'Leary felt every morning. But then it falls apart. Enemies at far distances update at half frame rate, giving everything at a distance a nightmarish look as they shake and shiver into existence. Also, a lot of pop-in is instantly noticeable, both on the NPCs as well as the buildings themselves. Now, when it comes back to looking up close and personal, I do have to admit also that the texture work could have really been improved. When it comes to the characters themselves, personally, I like them, but make no mistake, well, sure, it's a Bioshock look, that's for sure, but the game's like someone saw Admiral Akbar in Star Wars and thought, hey, you know what? If everyone had eyes even bigger than that, it'd be cool looking. But it's actually not. It's creepy as hell. It's also a design decision, and I back them for that, and I personally got used to it and sort of dug it at the end, but it's going to turn some people off. Another thing that's a little bit troublesome are the effects. You see, while there's a number of graphical options, many of them are tied together, including depth of field, which to get it to be almost off, you have to turn down a setting that also adjusts a number of other smaller effects in the game world, resulting in far off locations looking like they were on the floor after a grease spill. I am not lying. There were times where I wanted to wipe down my screen. It's just that blurry, even at 4K. Additionally, why they do try to hide the procedural generation of the level design itself, and frankly, I think did a better job than I personally expected, it is still noticeable, not necessarily with the buildings, which most of them you can't go into, but with overall the landscapes and layouts of the towns themselves. Almost everything in We Happy Few is a direct line from somewhere else, and it really doesn't give you this feeling of depth or at least width to the game and its overall exploration. What this sadly results in is a direct line from place to place, city location, grassy field and hamlet, city location, grassy field and hamlet, city location. It's not open world as much as it is big fat line. While well, inside some cities, there are the occasional vendors and places you can go into and homes to pilfer and then sleep inside to rest, but it's a bit antiseptic and certainly artificial and definitely anticlimactic, especially when you look at your map and you see, yeah, there's like one place interactable in this entire block. That doesn't mean exploration is ignored, because it absolutely is not. There are some unique things to find in the game, and I'll get to that in the quest section. And of course, that brings us to performance, and I can't say it's actually that great. 4K 60fps is an option with all the settings on medium and some on high sometimes. The game's infected with an occasional stutter as well, and that happens during a loading intermission that can pop up. This is obviously the streaming tech, and it went away when the game was installed on M2 memory, became sometimes noticeable on SSD, but was actually quite noticeable on a normal hard drive. That can leave We Happy Few feeling a bit less like a game that's future-proof for further technology versus one that's just straining against itself right now. Now, I was able to lock it at 60 FPS at 1440p with all the settings on high, except for the overall effect setting. That wasn't a performance issue. That's because that filter makes it look like dump. This is on a current i7 at 4.6 and a 1080 Ti. Bravo, though, to Compulsion for adding a large number of graphics options, including rendering resolution as well as FOV. In fact, Options-wise, the game offers more than many AAA games. I mean, it's no serious Sam, but few games actually are. 
Without a doubt, there are times when We Happy Few looks amazing, like the interiors of some locations and the excellent effects and just overall design work that we see in some of these areas. It's a shame it doesn't always extend to others, though. Also, many of the hamlets are excellent, extolling this dreary subculture feel to them that even require different clothes to sneak past certain people. But it's a rough look many other times, especially like right here, where you notice it's like everyone woke up, said, damn, I want to walk into the street and then promptly forgot what to do from there. Overall, I'd say it's okay, it is an acquired taste, but it's not without its issues. Sound, music, and voice. I know it was you. That's the one what done it. did it. <laughs> but I promised. I promised Percy I'd keep him safe while we were in Germany. You promised to help me get to the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the one in the parade on Apple Home. How would you even get to it? You can't even go to Maiden Home. And let's do sound first. This is actually good. One of the things that matters in We Happy Few is that social stealth element. And the game has no problem throwing powered up policemen, 15 civilians, and a couple workers into a small location. And you have to figure your way out around them. And using that sound direction in those particular locations is very important. Really so too are the environmental effects. Wind whipping across the rocks near a shore. The far off broadcast of a television telling you to be happy even if you aren't and that stray ambient insect and bird life thing that we expect in any kind of survival title. Those are well done. What isn't necessarily well done are the effects processes themselves, especially for things like room noise. It's not terrible. It's just at times it is something you may notice. Overall, I'd say it's got good sound, but a couple of the environmental processes probably need to be looked at. That brings us to music. This is good. I mean, it's not amazing, but it has subtly dreary bits when exploring what appears to be abandoned buildings and a couple hilariously licensed tracks as well that work really perfectly in those moments. It does also have moments that really remind you of No One Lives Forever 1 and 2 as well as Austin Powers, and it does a good job channeling that. The battle music with its little chime effect does a good job also of informing you sometimes you can walk past someone in drug-induced haze, but other times you're just going to smash them in the head with an axe as the best option. I like those little elements, and it certainly did inform me through the music of what was going on. Voice. I like this a great deal. The game leans heavily on their dreary side, especially when starting out, but there's a subtlety that grows here that I wasn't expecting, especially from a game that started out totally survival-based and then somehow shoved a story into it like the last person on an overloaded circus ride. It works well. I adore the main characters, too. I won't get into them much due to story detail, but each has some excellent lines, and there are a number of them which helps move that story along, as well as maybe give gamer hints of what to do next. And speaking of hints, there isn't a single one of anybody reading from this piece of paper someone handed to me. Very cool. And of course, that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. Now, We Happy Few tells three tales. Start now with Arthur, who goes on to explain that many of the city's inhabitants are hopped up on a drug called Joy, which allows for them to ignore the shit lives that they are actually leading. Soon, though, something triggers Arthur, and you're left in a state where you can choose to ignore or take your drugs. Regardless, sooner rather than later, you get a true indication of what is going on, and it's Arthur's combined story to unearth the truth about the society as well as escape from it. What follows is a three-part story in first person with survival elements, usually based on social stealth like sneaking past enemies, fitting in, or bribery. Some of the stories have a couple somewhat shared quests as well. You play as Arthur, then another character, then another, and you won't be going back. Luckily, the game does warn you when you're passing the point of no return with any of the characters. Now, while each character plays somewhat differently and each has unique main stats and skills, overall the gameplay is somewhat the same. Which means pilfering and performance story and side quests all along the game world, hoovering up every goddamned item you can find so you can make objects you need to survive and basically beating people to death. And the survival elements work well enough, but are not perfect. For example, it can feel a bit odd to have to pop joy so often because you never see anyone else doing it. It's always you, and it dawns on you that no one else in the game world has any of the kind of survival element requirements that you have to deal with, which can become a nuisance later on, but also does impact a bit of the story. 
And to get right to it, I'm going to answer that question probably everybody's asking. Does the hero suffer from FHS or Fat Hero Syndrome? And yes, they do, where it's like they use that old powdered donut bag for lungs and running anything longer than from the fridge and back to their sofa is a trial even professional athletes would turn down because it looks too hard. You have to usually watch out for your joy level as well, your food and drink, and you have to fight off ill effects from things like rotten food if you end up eating it. Penalties for not taking care of the needs is dependent on the difficulty, which I'll explain in a second. When you're not simultaneously starving, dehydrating, and shitting yourself to death, you can also fight enemies. When you decide to take on someone, you have a number of weapons you can get as well as some skills that augment those attacks, like being able to hit harder or choke out the bigger enemies. It's not Mirror's Edge though, don't expect to go wading in and pulling off cool moves. The skill system isn't necessarily bad, but it's not really robust either. You're not going to be sitting down going, man, I have so many choices. But each tree does offer a few unique skills that can offset a particular weakness you may have or buff it or offer some new avenue for exploration. And of course, that brings us to quests. And quests is when We Happy Few is absolutely at its finest and at its worst. Let's talk about best first. For a game that didn't seem to have much story in the past, it's filled with quests that flesh out the world. Hidden quests, secret quests, quests you have to stumble on, quests hidden at certain times a day. It's a fantastic romp at those moments. And you can find yourself on a long lost quest to find a Teddy Ruxpin that some creepily overaged collector wants secreted high in his treehouse fort. All the way to stopping people smoke to their gills on drugs from basically lighting themselves on fire in the middle of the street. But of course, this is when some of the problems creep in because while the story moments are meted out during quests, and many of them twist and turn around the various characters, and really did flesh out this world that I started to find myself caring about, the cornerstone of encounters isn't here much at all. You can do 10 to 15 quests in a row and meet no one, just zero, no interesting encounters, no unique puzzles, just go there, grab something, and trudge back. That's when the old roots really start to show past the color change that the devs have put into this game. It's funny because during those quests, you really do see that fetch quest stigma come up and you realize that so many other games that get hammered for it aren't really doing that, especially not as bad as this. The game really does show the weakness in fetch quests. Many times I would come to a location of a quest and be excited over what I may have to do. And yet it's just grabbing an item from a table and then running back home. Are they all like that? No, not at all. That's when the unevenness of We Happy Few is profound though, because at times you're so engrossed in the story and unique twists and just discovering various things and notes left around the world. And that question pops up in so many games. How did this dude get out here completely by himself and then set up a store? And what's so odd feeling is We Happy Few will do an excellent job one time showing you visual hints of how that might have happened, but then the next time, nothing at all. A lot of the quests don't have the punch that they need. Not the main quest though, so there is that. Now one interesting caveat to all this is when you start in the game world, your setup is done for you. It's procedurally generated, then sort of touched up by the system. So that means some players may even get quests, others don't. I think that's very cool. Now as you guys know, I test games on all difficulties and I have to say bravo to these guys for adding options past the typical easy, medium, and hard. There's the ability to cultivate your own experience, for example, setting combat difficulty, let's say, incredibly hard, but the survival elements to a minimum as well as the other elements of the game world. One of the things I really liked here is whenever anything affected that social stealth element, for example, no one shows up to gym class in a friggin' parka, so here you need to make sure you have clothes for each location, torn up clothes for the down and out districts, nice posh skins for the in-town locations, and even suits working for the maintenance locations and going in there so the enemies don't notice you. The issue here is that, my God, they can figure you out quickly. If you're not hopping yourself up on joy every 30 seconds, they can sniff you out from a great distance. Add to that the fact that you take so much joy, you begin to forget the actual real life events you had just prior. It's an excellent idea, but its balance seems off. And no matter what, which character or which difficulty you've chosen, it never hits perfectly. And of course, that brings us to discussing a little bit about the bugs. It's not infected, but if I were going to have sex with it, I'd wrap myself in like Dunlap tires and masking tape first, because some of them are doozies. The worst, of course, are the quest completion bugs. And there were many of them. I had one where I had to get two records. I grabbed the two records. I ran all the way home and the person's like, you do not have the two records, which I actually did. That happened a number of times and I had to go back to an old manual save. Also, one of the things you're going to notice in We Happy Few is that the people do not look like they're engaging in the world pretty much at all. Many times you're going to see them drop in, created by the random NPC generator on high. Other times they're just going to meander about, following almost the same lines of patrol that, let's say, the policemen follow, or freezing and not moving, as I mentioned earlier. It doesn't happen all the time, but, well, it pretty much happens all the time. That being said, the game isn't a bad length, with the first character being about nine hours for me. Now, admittedly, I looked for everything in the world and really did a lot of those quests. 
the second being a bit shorter, and the third being about the same length. You're looking at anywhere from 15 to 25 hours, depending on how much you dive into the side quests, many of which will require waiting for particular times, what difficulty settings you may have chosen, and so forth. It's a game that does reward stealth, though, due to the requirements of the survival element, so I can see some players trying to get as close to a no-kill run-through as possible, which could be a hell of a lot of fun. That brings us to Fun Factor. At times, We Happy Few is a ball. The story quests themselves had me actually interested in what was going on with each character, and the fact that they know each other and each story either overlaps or happens right after the other really worked incredibly well for me. And the world, at least for a while, is really interesting to take in. I liked exploring the places I could and finding a person far off in a field mumbling themselves and then finding out later they were mentioned in letters and even vocal narrative from other characters in different spots. That makes the world feel lived in. But the odd bugs, the overall feeling of fetch quest-itis this thing has, really did drop it down a notch or two for me. And when you combine those with the odd enemy pacing, the weird moments in the world, it leaves me with a feeling that We Happy Few has some incompleteness that needs to be shored up. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch again rating scale, with rent being replaced by deep, deep sale when it's a PC title. This is a wait for a sale and almost a wait for a deep, deep sale. This might strike your fancy, and I could not argue that some people are going to jump into it and feel like it's a great romp through a unique world. But over the time, it started to fall apart for me, and a lot of that was due to bugs and performance. The main story and the characters I liked, the overall world was interesting, but also that consistent lack of real return on many of the quests and feeling that I existed in this world that required so much from me, but didn't from anybody else was becoming bothersome. In a story-based game, you want a world to feel lived in, like everyone exists under the same overall rules as you, even if faked, so that breaking from them has emotional impact and doesn't feel like you're the only one running, but instead makes it feel like you're the only one who knows to run. In a survival-based game, you really want to feel balanced, where that push of requirements is punishing when ignored and can be ignored for longer and longer as you progress. But in We Happy Few, both those elements suffer due to the others. It's a mix that can be amazing, it's just not always amazing, and to be brutally honest, is really beset by technical issues. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Maybe check out Reddit or Twitter. Of course, you can become a patron on the Patreon website, which helps me give reviews for games that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap, because as you guys know, I buy every single game I review and give them away to patrons. Peace out, and enjoy the rest of your week.